This is Dr. Caudill Miller with Dr. Miller's Guide to Neurology, and we're talking about common problems that you see in a neurological practice today. We're going to talk about concussion. Concussion is very, very common, particularly in people that play any kind of sports, but with falls, motor vehicle accidents, very common. It's a closed head injury with or without loss of consciousness. You can have a concussion without losing consciousness. Um, you can have a concussion without even having altered mental status or altered sensorium, but it's caused by a blow to the head or violent shaking of the head or body. Violent shaking like you see with child abuse, violent shaking like you see with whiplash or in a car accident. You know, when you talk about concussion, you describe the, the, the condition in detail, exactly what happens in detail, particularly whether they lost consciousness or not. Other neurological symptoms people have a concussion are, are memory loss, amnesia, headaches, um, just temporary cognitive dysfunction. You can have a concussion, not even remember that you had it. You can have nausea, vomiting, dizziness, ringing in the ears. You can be very sleepy, very anxious, depressed, rare focal deficits. Work up, you know, acutely we do a CT because you see blood better acutely on CT. An MRI to look for a cerebral contusion, which you often miss on um, a CT, and then the EEG to see if the EEG is slow and a suggestion of, of encephalopathy. There's no good medical treatment options. The best treatment is just rest. And all this talk we have about concussion over the years, there's just no good medical treatment. <clears throat> there is a heads up action plan. It's a six step return to play progression. Six steps. An athlete has to go through these six steps and pass them to be able to go back and play any kind of sport. And if it's a felony in a lot of states. I know it's a felony in Alabama. I think it is in Tennessee. If you release somebody back to contact sports and they get hurt and they've not passed this action plan, this six-step return to play progression, then it's a felony. You can lose your medical license. You can go to jail. Step one, just back to regular activities, back to school and work. When your symptoms resolve, you can move to step two. You cannot move to step two until your symptoms are totally resolved. If you never get out of step one, you can't move to step two and you can never play sports again. It's that simple. But to get to step two, just light aerobic activities, stuff like the treadmill, the bike. If you do that, you feel fine, you go to step three, moderate. Running, you know, heavier workouts, you know, in the gym, heavier cardio. If you pass step three, have no symptoms, step four heavy activity so you can play football with no contact practice with no contact step five practice and full contact if you have no symptoms step six release to competition this program has been great i remember when i was younger you know i was pretty hard um on kids with concussion we used the university of colorado guidelines back then and you know but what we were sort of taught back then if you have one concussion you sit out for a week two you sit out for a month three um, you can't play forever. I still sort of like that, even though that's not part of the guidelines now. You could have 10 concussions and you could go back and play if you pass the six steps. I don't really like that. I think there's something wrong with your brain if you're having multiple concussions. And, you know, we worry about this CT, this chronic traumatic encephalopathy. These people have multiple concussions. Um, so it's something really to take into consideration. But, you know, when I would have someone with a third concussion and I would tell them they couldn't play back in the day, they would just find somebody else to, to release them. And so you need to stick with this plan. And this makes it so much easier, the Step 6 program, because these, these psycho parents that think their kids are going to be in the NFL, and as you know, almost nobody goes to the NFL. I mean, they will make their kids play, you know, and find a doctor that will release them when they're not ready. It's also very interesting, a lot of these kids, when you get them alone, you know, you say, listen, you can go back and play. You've, you've gone through the six steps. You can go back and play. But if you don't want to play, if you're scared to play, I'm the doctor. I'll tell them you can't play. I'll send you a letter. You can no longer play contact sports. You'd be shocked. I bet, you know, eight out of ten of the football players that I've seen like this, they don't want to play. And the letter... You know, for me, helps them say face at school. They say, Dr. Miller won't let me play. He's a prick. Hey, I'm willing to take that rather than risk them um, having permanent injury. Because I think, you know, kids that have concussion and young men and women that have multiple concussions, they have a sixth sense that something's not right. And uh, so, you know, I'll write that letter. So that's concussion. And uh, we'll talk about CT on another day. So like, subscribe, comment, and more later.